what's up females that only watch hockey because the players are attractive? <laughs> I'm Have y'all ever to- seen Malkin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Billy, Maddie, shut up. I'm- Wait, hold on. I already got a Maddie shut up for about 10 seconds in. You think Malkin's <laughs> hot? Tom. Are you talking to me or are you talking to Jake? You told you? me to shut up, so you. No, I was just talking about... Never mind. Hi, I'm Paul <laughs> Mistanat, and I have some incredibly shitty opinions with my 23 NHL Oof. career points. Anyway, Let's get we're going to start off going hot, but... <laughs> well, Tom already told me to shut up and then said, never mind. We'll get to... We'll get He's to never told me to shut up before. Tom's coming in hot. I'm sorry, He's excited. I'm sorry, Maddie. He said shut up and then cowered in a corner. Yeah, He's like, I'm my, sorry. That, I agree with what you say, Maddie. That's my, <laughs> that's my personality. Have you guys not figured that out yet? Tom is really excited right now because I'm going to be visiting him this next week after opening night, and I will be bringing Maddie with me, which is I going to make to say, it Maddie's even crazier. Coming. Why can't you just say we're going to see him? Well, because yeah. it's Tom, not all about you. I'm going and I'm bringing thing. Maddie. <laughs> well, we're bringing Maddie's As dog, a sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it'll be exciting. I'm going to bring my mic and we're going to do a little in-person episode. We might even do a little video content. So we'll see how it all goes. Because you can only do so Thomas much. Swirly. You. If we do video content, I'm going to give Thomas Swirly. <laughs> Bullying Tom Please in his own house. And I'm going to give Jake no. a wedgie and hang him over a door. I thought you were going to put it we over the do, top of the head. We can definitely oh, do I that. Oh, I like that too. We can definitely do that. And Tom um, will tell me to shut up and then leave his own home. Probably. So we'll get into some fun Paul missed the net stuff eventually. But right now we're going to talk a little bit about our favorite segment. Two people have new hair in this podcast. Sorry, Maddie keeps oh, gesturing God. to her, her new hair. It is black <laughs> as the souls of it's, hockey it's fans. Not, it's not black. Oh, it's I don't know. Almost... I'm a man. I don't have as much color, you know. You can't, much color. you can't say that you're gay and then not be able to identify that this isn't black. I was an I identify that I don't see I'm color. Color. <laughs> but Maddie, you at the times. <laughs> um, Tom gave himself a beautiful haircut too. Yeah, Tom looks sharp. He looks like a, he looks like he's gonna join like a WWE thing pretty soon. I mean, like, Wait, what that? did D-Mac call him? Uh, Van Halen. Van Halen, yeah. <laughs> Van Halen, yeah. <laughs> That's a banger of a compliment, by the way. That you is know, a banger I, of I a compliment. I will always take it. When I went down to uh, do the stuff with my family, I was with Jimmy and Mike, and we went out to the bar, and there was this giant-ass poster, Bob Seger on the board. This guy comes up to me at the pool table, and is like, hey, you look just like Bob Seger. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That's dope. I, I will take that anyway. Yeah. Kind of like Kid Rock. Day. Oh, no. Those are the three men that I know with long hair. Van Halen. What about Bob the Lord Seabrider. and Savior? What about and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Yeah. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, speaking of amen, let's talk about some of the. <laughs> let's men talk about a D man <laughs> on the Detroit Sports Update, uh, our favorite segment. Honestly, I. I'm not excited about this segment today, but I'm happy to take the lead as a proud in-person lion sufferer. I was at that Seahawks game. Oh, and, that's embarrassing. Yep, thank you. And I paid a pretty penny for that. And uh, you know, that was the- one of the craziest football games I've ever seen. When they weren't defending, it looked really cool. It mm. looked elite. Yeah. It, no. Okay. Chill. I, I wouldn't say it looked <laughs> elite. But when they weren't on defense, I don't know. There were a lot of things that went wrong. But obviously, if you we could not, for the love of God, stop their offense. And I'm like, Gino fucking Smith, guys, really? You're going to let this fucking old man just run train on us? And oh, my God. My heart. First of all, I, I got there drunk. My friends invited me to this vip tailgate which was really cool it's like all you can eat like luxury like food and drinks so i showed up plastered and i was like really buzzing like in my first game back since my trip and i love my little lions and yeah it was just quite quite the showing and if any of you didn't catch the game just consider yourself lucky i wish i could turn back time and just save myself the suffering so that's that's what's going on with our lions worst defense in the league they haven't fired our defensive coordinator yet but Aaron best Glenn. offense in the league that yeah so let's look on the bright side 
I mean, that was another thing though. We have so many injuries right now that I was already expecting it to be a challenge. And then, if, you know, if you can't stop the other team, <laughs> you, you can't win a game. That's the thing about the Lions is yeah. I feel like they're not really playing to win. It's, it feels like every single time they have a game, they're playing to kind of counteract the other team like you're but not not trying to win as much as they should be so lots of guys injured my dude Amon Ra still injured day to day so we'll see I'm just feeling a bit down and I'm not going another Lions game mark my fucking words I'm not going another Lions game until Thanksgiving hey speaking of which um I was thinking about going to a Lions game like the week before Thanksgiving I think like the I don't remember what team's in town but if you're down we should go I thought you already said you were going to go with me on Thanksgiving. Well, yeah, we're going to do the whole Thanksgiving thing, oh, shit. right? Yeah, do you want so to come you're... to, wait, do you want to come to my family Thanksgiving? Holy shit. <laughs> that would be so fun. <laughs> do you want to come? I have about three Thanksgivings I'm going to have to go to. Fine. But I'm, a- I'm happy to add one more on the list. You're uninvited anyway. Lame. Tom, you're welcome to join. I'm not the Tigers. The Indians own are finally done for the oh season. thank the fucking finally. lord oh I my know. god every single time i got an update on my phone that they were ever playing i was like why why are you still doing this guys do you this... think that al avila had a humiliation kink mm, and do you think that's why he got just obliterated on every trade by the way speaking of trades that al avila made justin verlander 39 years old is finishing the season of the 1.75 era which thank is you for that Great. i'm really glad you had that yeah can can we just bring it and open up old wounds Jake? i wonder what yeah, nice what prospects fuck? he he got in return for that verlander Shut. trade you <laughs> pile of fucking... dog shit that's what he uh, got. i was gonna say dog dirty shit. dog but tom dirty dog yeah that breaks my heart fuck you jake and fuck you al avila um on the bright side i think the pistons did pretty they, they didn't yeah. win against the the knicks but that starting five is looking good i'm i'm excited for them uh, oh jake i, like, I, I like have an Ivey. extra pistons ticket if you want to come next thursday that that might be let's we'll we'll talk about this offline <laughs> we'll take this offline we'll take this offline my favorite corporate slang <laughs> and then they message you which is still online drives me crazy Anyway, right, that doesn't make this. sense. We'll take this offline. It's never offline. You're always online, Karen. Since this is a Red Wings podcast, we should probably Fine. talk about the Red Wings. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Where I'm do really you want to start? No, this has been pretty great. No, I'm Where cool with not talking start? about it. They about what? I haven't watched many of the preseason games. I've been like super busy this last week. Lots of things okay, going flex, on. Flex, you social home. queen. Yeah, I know, but I think they lost two of the games and won one of yeah. them. At That's the time of this recording, right. uh, we are recording as of Thursday, the 6th of October. And I'm sure they'll have a bunch of other games. There are just too many preseason games, guys. There's way too many. Well, there's it's, only eight. But yeah, the Caps, they're... for example, only had six, which I think is really? interesting. That's yeah, yeah, they were talking. I, so I was watching the game last night again against the Caps. They put all the series. It's been one here, one there. But last night we didn't put we didn't put like a lot of the guys who we know are going to make the team out on the ice which i thought was yeah. interesting like in some of the earlier games it was more of a an elite squad that we were seeing for the preseason games but last night they were really trying to give some of the other guys more minutes and i watched the lalon interview this morning and for example like just talking about edvinson he said you know, don't really take note of who he's paired with right now. It's just he's trying to get him minutes, put him on the power play, just see how he can adjust to different situations on the ice. So another thing he said was that they haven't had a final roster yet and it could take until at least Sunday. So all of this speculation from everyone is really fun. And I think it's kind of like a little puzzle just seeing how everybody puts different guys on different lines it's it's fun discourse except if you're a fucking idiot then it's not fun discourse i don't like seeing people put i don't know speaking of not fun discourse <laughs> no don't let's save it let's save it we'll get around to it. oh we will speaking um, of dumb idiots who put people on the second line um yeah no i think this this has this preseason has shown that there's a lot of good problems that we have right now Agreed. by good problems i mean there are a lot of players that fit and there are a lot of players that could potentially make an impact on opening night. I mean, you're talking Jonathan Bergeron, Elmer Soderblom, even Simon Edvinson, who's been if, 
Not in if cold. they make opening night, though. If they do, if but they that, but that's what I mean. Ah, okay. Is every single time I think I have this roster figured out and I write right. down a lineup, it's nothing like what it could possibly be. Yeah. Right. Right now, my honest prediction is Bertuzzi, Larkin, Raymond, Verona, Cop, Peron, Zadina, probably Suter, Kubalik, Ernie, Rasmussen, and Sunquist, and then uh, Bergen and Soderblom start in Grand Rapids. I don't want this. I don't want this, but I see this being a fairly likely scenario. With that, Sunquist, being you have over uh, like Soderblom. Yeah. So, so let me let me add some caveats to this. With that being said, like. I think that a lot of, I mean, Soderblom and Bergen have been playing out of their minds this preseason. Right. And I think they could potentially push guys out of spots. Yep. I also think that Joe Valeno has played. Oh yeah. You well. didn't even, He's been great. you didn't even mention Valeno. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so in this, in this conservative prediction, he would start in Grand Rapids. But with that said, I think he could be the fourth line center. And I think Rasmussen's played good enough where he could be the He's third line really center. He's been really good. He's been mm-hmm. good. I honestly, so Moose last night, I think, had two goals. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I've been I've been more and more impressed with him. And we will get to Zadina. But what I want to say is last season, I was kind of a Rasmussen hater. Not a hater, but I was You're just skeptical. like. You know, well, my thing is, he's such a big dude. And he was just not using his body to his advantage or our advantage, let's say. So I was just disappointed that he... One, we probably one of the reasons we got him is his size, not using it, and then also just not really producing that much. But since then, also towards the end of last season, he's made a lot of great improvements. And this preseason, I'll say he's also been looking really good. So I see him definitely being in that lineup on opening night. Oh, Rasmussen's a hundred percent in. Yeah. But just yeah. where where he is, you know, is the question. Yeah. yeah. I I'm, I, I yeah, I think s- him and Suter could go back and forth in terms of third and fourth line. And I know Jake, you said you had some Suter discourse. I want to hear it. Yes, I have a very interesting question for both of you. What? Here's my hypothetical for you. You have all four lines pretty much set, but through this preseason, Valeno and Rasmussen continue to play at the level that they're at. Suter has been dead silent this whole preseason like i haven't heard a word from yeah. him i don't think he scored a point i don't i don't no. see him when i'm on the ice yeah what I do you do with heard him? his name cold do so. you do you throw him on the wing mm. do you throw rasmussen on the wing or do you try to this is the spicy one do you try to look for a team like philly that doesn't have their top line center that is rep- like just out of any options for center yeah and do you posit an offer because suitors cheap He's on an expiring deal. He's low yeah. risk, decent reward. You know, if he pans out for them, good. If not, they can be rid of him by the end of the year. Mm. I, I don't know. I, I just don't know where he fits in this lineup as I continue to, to look at this. That is interesting. I hadn't really thought about it because I'm, I'm a little bit, okay, to, this is biased now and I'll be very transparent. I really like him and he plays for my favorite or played for my favorite Swiss team and gave me his stick last season. So I, I'm very partial. I'll put that up, but I, I think last year though, like we did see a lot of good production from him and I don't know, it goes back to the same conversation we're having about fucking Soderbloom that, you know, based on their, preseason performance is that going to be everything for the decision for opening night i don't know but i also agree trading him also based on his performance last season could could be good looks for us and you know in the in the long interview from this morning he said i've never had this uh problem where we have so many players so i do think there will be a trade in coming Oh. But <laughs> source. Um, <laughs> source i just made it up um, um so like we'll see like i guess my question uh, just to follow up on that because i like Suter too and i think yeah. he's almost certainly going to be on the lineup mm. what do you what do you do here if you were in charge if you were Derek cry. alone i would just you, cry i think i would cry too i it's, it's like a are, good you, are you problem really to have but at the same time it's one of the shittiest problems to have for a roster and trying to build it having all these pieces that you can keep up on the nhl roster but also having right. these younger guys who need to really realistically have some time and start to feel out playing in the NHL. Yeah. 
I go like, back and forth. So what do you do? Like, I, I don't know. I, I think that it would be not great to make help Soder, Glomer, Berger and make the opening night lineup and then just throw them on the fourth line. Like, I don't think that's that's a good spot for no. them. No. My really spicy lineup that I have in mind mm-hmm. is Bert Larkin, Raymond, Verona, Cop, and then either Soder, Blum, or Bergren. And then the on third the line. second line? Yeah. So you could even do this on the third line. Interesting. You move Perron down, and then you put a guy like Kubalik. You know, you, you put him on a line with like Suter and Kubalik or Rasmussen and Kubalik and see how that goes. But then that would, of course, require... Zadina to be knocked down to the fourth line. And we all saw how the internet reacted when hmm. um <laughs> when he was down on the fourth line last season. I don't know. I, I I really don't know. And I don't envy Derek Lone's position in this. Good luck to him. It's gonna be great. Yeah. It will be great. It'll be good. Yeah. Cause I mean, if he throws out the opening night roster that I have together, no one's gonna be happy that none of those three guys are up in Detroit and they're all in Grand Rapids. And you want the kids to play. Like, this is a good season yeah. to have them and play. And you do. But you also want to make sure that they're getting enough minutes to really develop. And exactly. five, five minutes in the NHL every other night, not going to really do that great. Do you guys believe in the, like, theory about over-ripening? We already talked about this last episode. And did I disagree. Really? Yeah, I disagree yeah, kind with of, you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I got it's, uh, it's an interesting conversation to have. I saw your discourse that you had on Twitter earlier, Jake, and I, think I turned off art- notifications today. <laughs> Holy Prob- moly, probably a good thing for you, Maddie. <laughs> Thanks, but we'll get to that. ASAP. Yeah, you didn't even. I, I, oh, no, you I did. Think, I think there's something to be said on both sides of that argument about over ripening. But it's, well, a, okay, Tom. it's a long conversation. Sarah, Sarah Sivian replied to me and said that there, there is data that backs it up. Shout out to Sarah. Oh, there is. Um, but all of the people that have access to that Excuse data are me? NHL employees. Well, <laughs> guess what, Jake? What? We don't use data. No, unless it furthers podcast. our narrative. Well, it unless doesn't. It. So. Well, it doesn't have, I don't have any horse in this game. Furthers our argument that Detroit has a tendency to overripe players. Then I'll take the analytics. I don't. I don't know. I honestly don't know if they do or don't. Um, yeah, I know that I don't. Either. There are guys like Tatar that spent a lot of time in the minors, but then when he came up, he was fine. Yeah. Yep. Um, exactly. It. Ju- I think it's a case by case basis, and it depends on the player. Because some people, like if they're left in the minors that long, then they're going to be like, okay, cool. Then I guess I suck. And then other people might. That's be also like, true. I'll give you that. Yeah. Mentally. It's because yeah. hockey's just as much a menthol game as it is a physical game. A menthol game? Did you mean to say menthol? Yeah, he meant to do it. Look at his little smirk. Of course he meant to. Look um, at him. He's so proud of himself, too. Of, I know. Of, look at him. He's not even going to acknowledge it. Look at him blushing. I know. Oh, my God. Oh, hey. Jakey. Jakey. <laughs> okay, we're done with that. Um, let's get to our next fun bit. Maddie has had... <laughs> Help. Help. <laughs> Maddie Help. destroyed Detroit Red Wings Twitter. Maddie, Maddie may have broke. Like, I mean, I saw this. I saw stuff on like Reddit at one point about really? you. Yeah, like not you specifically, but the discourse that you really? created. Yeah, oh, I'm so powerful. You've crossed platforms. I've cross pollinated. Wow. So to give you give everybody a bit of background, last <laughs> night during the game. Maddie <laughs> tweeted this out. Let I had enough. Enough was enough, Jake. I was pushed to my limit because I was also at the preseason game last Friday, and it was, that's where it started. Okay, so this tweet was just the straw that broke the fucking camel's back. Here is the tweet: People who defend Zadina, <laughs> do you guys ever watch him play? Or <laughs> and then from there, everybody piled on, blew up. But like, so a lot of people defended me. How many likes did it yeah. get? 25 okay so okay. it's not much mid, but i mean like mid. there's the one afterwards got 71 Ooh. oh that meme i made mm-hmm. i didn't read it the meme is the the joke is like uh the template is the girl <laughs> screaming into the guy's ear and she's this like is me this is me at red wing so zadino is drafted sixth overall and hasn't been better than average since he joined the show he's cocky but not able to show anything for it Despite this, Wings fans keep acting like he's a messiah and make excuses for him with no good results in sight, minus a decent preseason. In parentheses, not good. Okay. That, was my, that part made me laugh. <laughs> that, um, okay, glad. Glad I, I added on that laugh. because do you know who else has had a great preseason? 
our good friend Adam Ernie. <laughs> we need him on the podcast side note. I actually reached out to him I saw and that. I asked if we could promote his brand. So Please hopefully he gets back to us. That would be yes. iconic. I would wear his like quarter zip because I guarantee there's going to be a quarter zip with that little logo. There's I definitely a quarter oh, yeah. zip baby golf mm-hmm. polo. A yeah. hat. Yeah, if you know we it. Get Ernie on here. I will wear that quarter zip with so fucking why? pride. We all will. Pride. We're gonna poison the well. Okay, wait. So um, can we, let's anyway, yeah, let's talk about the Zadina stuff. So, like, I don't really, I don't know. I feel like we, this dead horse has just been beaten over and over and over that by is every fair. form of media. Yeah, and I feel like it's always the same argument. It's always somebody brings up a pretty valid criticism of how he plays, and then a bunch of people dogpile on, and they're like, "You must not watch Zadina play." Yeah. Well, okay. Just to reiterate, and I I can talk about this calmly now, but if if I open Twitter again, it might change. My beef about Zadina is simply this man was picked sixth overall. And like any, you know, top 10 pick, you have really high, any first round pick, you have high expectations for them. And when he came into the league, he was like, oh, I'm going to fill the nets of all the teams that didn't pick me. So that's this fucking that's how he fucking starts. And I don't know, every he just seems so lackadaisical. I feel like he's not trying as hard as he can. I just feel like some there's like a piece of the puzzle in his head or his body that's missing. I do feel like he has it in him. And nobody wants to hear this part of my discourse, but I just like when I watch him play, he's never that guy who's like hustling really hard to like battle for the puck or like, I I just don't see that from him. And the other night they had an interview with him during the the preseason game. The the reporter asked, so Philip, what have you done in the off season to help your on ice skills? He goes, I've been doing everything I can on the ice, but he'd never really said what he was doing. Like, I mean, okay, I'm just maybe I'm now being extra critical because all hockey players kind of answer questions no, I mean, like that. I mean, the thing but is, like, like, it's just frustrating. Like, you give this exact same kind of criticism to like any other player that underperforms. Like, this isn't like you're not like singling right. him out. And I no. think a lot of people seem to think that like because he's 22 or because like, right. oh, he still has potential that you're like going after him specifically when. Like that's not it's the case. It's not at all. the case. It's, I am a you, hater you, for other players as well. When you draft a player that high, I mean, there's a certain set of standards that you you keep in mind. And when you see Quinn Hughes, who was drafted right after yeah. him, and how he's played, like, yeah, exactly. It, and I think also oh, something worth noting here is a lot of my frustration is with actually the Wings fans and not with. I mean, although I am frustrated with Zadina, my frustration is people who blindly defend him. And are just like, yeah, he's a kid and, you know, and he had this coach and blah, blah, blah. Like, like that it's because he played under Blashell. All of our players have to be bad. Like, I don't, I don't agree with that discourse, but at the same time, and I said this on Twitter and I'll say it again, if Zadina proves himself this season, I will eat my words and I want to be able to eat my words. I don't want him to be bad. I love this fucking team too much. Clearly I'm on a podcast talking about it. I want him to be really good and he's just not it right now. So hopefully he turns it around and we're all happy, if, but if I'm Z- a hater right now. If Zadina goes off this season, let's say like 45 points or higher, mm-hmm. would you wear the Blackhawks shirt? I was going to say if he scores 30 goals, he Man, won't score thirty him. goals, and if he well, does, if he scores thirty oh, goals, no, I'll he, wear he the won't. fucking black. I'm not gonna say <laughs> I'm, I'm open but... to it, but like we also have to make this an open if competition. Like one of you also have to be at the. I'm gonna of say you know, if he scores like if he scores twenty goals, I would wear it. What about you, Tom? What's your so? <laughs> you're going with twenty. Maddie's going with thirty. So I feel like I have to go with 40 15. just just because no, that's, <laughs> no, no you this be is bold. Dumb. <laughs> we have to think of a better we have to no, think of a better yeah, we gotta think of, but think of I don't know. I'll do something. Out. Give me something creative and not what I almost tweeted. last night. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh, good God. The, the um, scariest thing for anyone who follows my Twitter, anything that I thought about tweeting but didn't tweet has to be really fucked up because I am already just a loose cannon on there as it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, we've heard some of the drafts. Oh, the drafts. <laughs> I have some new drafts since our last review, but but if um, we're going to talk about being out of pocket, I really want Kubalik 
on my fantasy hockey team because I really want to call my team Kubalik my balls. So I mean, it's a he's, great he's a sneaky good though. I mean, he, I was at the yeah. game where they were playing uh, Pittsburgh and he scored two goals. And he said, like, Kuba lick my balls. Kuba lick my balls. They all, they got diagnosed with Kuba Ligma. Oh, mm-hmm. dude, that was yeah. good. Wait, so, Jake, I'm wait, so happy wait. that we're on this podcast together. Guys, Thank you. I'm also Kuba happy Ligma? that I'm on this podcast. <laughs> what's Kuba Ligma? <laughs> what? It's uh, the same thing as up dog. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to ask. I know, I know. I had I, I, He was laying it up. <laughs> no, yeah. we need a good, we need, let's do a challenge, not today. We right. make some stupid, like, one of those jokes for every single guy on the wings. I'm sure we could come up with something. Yeah. Andrew I'm copped sure that ass. Yeah. Rana, fuck your I don't mother. Know. Yeah, I almost said mother. I was like, yeah, it feels weird. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Do you guys want to talk about Paul missed the net? And so, this stupid ass thing that he said. Yeah. What, yeah, we can talk ex- about it. Please explain so to me what happened. It was a, I think it was a preseason game involving the Stars. And they were talking about Tyler Sagan. And he said, I don't know if he said females or women, but he said, like, women only watch the NHL because uh, the players are good looking. Like, they're, they're attractive. Some, yeah, something along those lines. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself a couple things. My first thought is, um, why is this guy famous? Like I'm, I'm sorry. Like I have I, a lot I, of thoughts about this. I'm, I'm gonna be like, I'll keep it, I'll keep it a buck. He scored 23 career points in the NHL. He was a dog shit forward. Nobody. Okay, whatever. Like, like, like wait. I don't think you have to be a good player to be. A no, good no, no, no. You can be a bad player and but and like a good broadcaster, but he's also like bad at that too. Like he's he does like the bar stool interviews where it's just like bros being bros and saying a couple yeah. things where you're like, oh, that's kind of weird. Anyway. I know. Um, well, and like, like, I guess my, my main point that I'm trying to make is like, is this the best we can do? Is this the best you can get on the NHL network? There are so many other amazing he's on TNT or TNT. Is this the best TNT you can get? There are so many other amazing, talented people that you could easily, easily put on that lineup. And instead you're throwing on like the dude that runs the bar stool podcast. Like, really? Come on, guys. The bar okay. is on the floor. I have many thoughts here, so I don't really know where to start, but so I'll preface this by saying I listen to Spit and Chicklets and I appreciate, you know, I think in a lot of ways, their humor is similar to what we do. You know, we're raunchy and we say things that, you know, it's not really politically correct, maybe to say. And I think that because Biz has a really great personality and that's something that we have talked about before and by great personality I just mean he makes people laugh and he shocks people and you know that's why people are going to listen to spit and chicklets or watch TNT imagine if that was Connor McDavid talking you know God. exactly exactly <laughs> Wet so blanket. I do think that you know he was like a comically mid NHL player and he makes fun of himself for that as well yeah. But Which is like, good, you know, <laughs> like you got right, to right. Like that. And like, he's a big memer. And I do like that he spreads the game and he's done a lot of like really cool things for the game at the same time. That's why it's even more disappointing to hear comments like that. But yeah. I'm also, you know, he, in the end of the day, at the end of the day, Spitting Chicklets is from Barstool. And we know that most, okay, this is my now my take but most of the barstool content and people running it are dudes who have those views about women in sports and that's why i try to like shy away and i'm like terrified of men who are like really proud barstool supporters like if you have a barstool flag i cannot date you but that being said i do i do think that you know i found this like i'm right in between being a snowflake and like this is just comedy, you know, because I do feel like obviously he's joking yeah. and he, you know, at the end of the day, it's a joke, but it's the, what I get nervous about is how other like men or people who listen to that are going to like repeat it. That's and what I, that's having my the main platform. worry. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like for me, and if you know someone like Jake, if you would have made that joke and then like women only watch, watch it for the way. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you say stupid shit like that, and just like misogynistic shit like that. I'm like, haha, that's funny. And like, people know it's a joke. And I think, but because some of, dude could misinterpret that exactly. especially yeah. with Barstool's platform. Exactly. Yeah. Is, that's my point. So I think it's a slippery slope and it's like, you know, obviously very disappointing, but for any 
women out there, you're used to hearing stupid shit like that, unfortunately. Especially it's not like, if you listen to sports or follow sports. Yeah, it's not like anything so shocking. Like, first of all, NHL players are really hot. And when I was a teenager, I felt really bad, like, to even admit that because I just, like, everyone, every woman, every girl in high school who liked hockey was just called a puck slot automatically. Puck slot. Like, and I think that's a different story. Now I'm like, yeah, I would fucking fuck the shit out of Henrik Lundqvist. Like, I don't care. Oh, I would too. <laughs> like, Let's I have honest. eyeballs and I'm a straight woman. Like, come on. But at the same time, like, I don't know. You don't, I think a lot, a lot of fans, either gender, like someone because of how they look, maybe not about their yeah. skill. I, like, mean, I, I think yeah. Tyler Sagan's very handsome and that's like the only reason I'll go to bat for him, really. <laughs> like, yeah, he's hot as shit. Wait, do you remember the video I showed you when I met him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I met, so I met Tyler Sagan. I was like, I, I told, I asked him if I could have a picture with him <laughs> and then I, I started recording a video. He's like, oh, it's a video. I was like, yeah, I'm like, I was 16, I think. I'm like, okay. I'm here with Tyler Sagan and he's a healthy scratch tonight. He goes, I'm not a healthy scratch and I'm injured. <laughs> and then <Yeah. laughs> walked away. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. Yeah, it was kind of legendary, but um, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I'm not trying to like poo poo pee pee, like cry no, about. No, it's okay. Oh, some, some people man are bad. though. But like a lot of, people that i know yeah have, like yeah. you included have to deal with this bullshit all the time right yeah and like they have and, to deal with it in like small scale stuff you know like right. oh, whatever you're at like a game and some dude says something sexist but like to have somebody on national tv still doing shit like that is just like exactly um yeah. and one of the most dog shit comments i saw it's actually from someone i know which made me very disappointed was like oh turn on the nba like they said like, like girls are dogs and i was like why is that like, Why every what about ism? Like, what's what's oh the my, point of doing? People that? do like, that with Sedina too. What about ism yeah. with the Sedina comments were insane. Okay, yeah. shout out to one of our listeners who told us that Nathan McKinnon <laughs> didn't break out until he was twenty-two. Somebody also <laughs> privately messaged me about Ryan Kessler. Really? Yeah. Why? I swear, with his stats, he no. came with receipts. He said, "Look at he Ryan Kessler." <laughs> to everyone that's in Maddie's DMs and mentions. <laughs> calm the fuck down <laughs> you you missed the entire point of the joke if you think that the problem that she has is with zadina and not you i have well, actually i do have i do have a problem with zadina but it is a lot of those people yeah. though yeah yeah for um, sure to, to close out a little bit of our biz stuff i do yeah. have a proposition for somebody for anybody if you have a twitter account and you tweet anything slandering barstool pay attention to your replies just just watch because yeah. no matter what you say, as long as you type the word barstool, there are dudes who make it. They're Go like to bat. Yeah. They like, like they beat their wives. They <laughs> keyword search that that word it's, to yeah. see if people are talking bad about their big boy, Dave Portnoy, so that they can defend him in the comments. Like Barstool has had some like fun content before, but like a lot oh of the content God. stolen. <laughs> Like, well, yeah, most of it is. Most yeah. of it. Is. You know, Barstool it, it, Detroit actually reposted me on Instagram yeah, and Twitter yeah. on Sunday. But it's like, it, I like it, that it page. Those guys that have the fucking flags and retweet right. everything, exactly. listen to everything every minute, every single show. It's like, dude, develop a personality, go outside, touch yeah. some fucking grass, like, yeah. meet women. <laughs> Seriously. Not though. me, though. They can't meet. They're going to meet that, women yeah. and then just be fucking gross. Mm-hmm. Also fair. Don't meet women. No, meet. Don't meet women. <laughs> That's, I don't think they are meeting. Don't. don't in they, fact, don't go outside. I don't want to yeah, see you don't go storming outside. the Capitol Don't again. touch grass. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't know. Jake, you need to is calm that down. the same? <laughs> yeah. Is it? Are, are the? No. The I'm Jake. Like, I need to calm down. I just be saying things. Jake, here's my issue. I feel like I'm pretty moderate, and then Jake will go onto our Twitter and just say something like super oh, left, and I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying like, yeah, it's kind of hateful towards open Jake goes, yeah, and don't storm the Capitol again. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if you happen to be a Barstool listener and you happen to be very busy on January 6th, you know, like that raises some questions. Oh, you took out, a, you took a field trip to Washington, D.C. Were you hanging out with Cross Hannes? Oh, here we go. <laughs> so Maddie and I will actually be attending the opening night game. Ooh. If you see us, come say hi. We Eight will be days wearing... to go. Look for look for me. I'll be the guy in the Red Wings jersey. And I will be, be pretty easy to spot. the chick with dark hair. 
Yeah, that we should be pretty easy to spot in a crowd. You'll just hear Jake. No, Jake's laugh. Yeah, so kind of in look, person sounds like a hyena. So just listen, listen to that, that and both listen of us just that. being the biggest enablers to each other. I will be handing out pins. They look like political pins that you'd wear. They kind of are with the three one three hockey logo. And I also have a hat for somebody for whoever can deliver the best pickup line to either myself or Maddie, and we will all vote on it as a group and then deliver it to that person at some point in the game. With so a come hug say and hi. a kiss on the forehead. If, mm-hmm. if, with, if they do so feel inclined. No, I was going to say with consent if you want a forehead kiss. Yes. I will also have stickers for whoever wants it. So find us. I think we'll be going to Harry's before the game. So we'll also be there. Uh, not to dox us. I'll be there. I know Maddie will be there. I'll be there too. I won't. I know ever. Yeah, won't Tom be won't be sober. there. I won't. I'll be snowed in. I'm supposed to get oh. our first sign of snow today. Woo! Oh God, and I have to. Ugh, I have to. But then. That. Oh shit! Oh, I cannot. That's gonna wait. be fun. Can we go tobogganing? Yeah, we can go tobogganing. Oh, we're gonna have a blast. Yeah. The um, three one three so- hockey podcast nonstop adventure. Yep. It'll be great. Snowshoeing, ice fear and loathing in Houghton, Michigan. Oh no! We can go snowboarding in town. <laughs> the that most terrifying fun. part Were is you... being in a car with Jake for ten hours. <laughs> oh, that's that's. I'm actually fire. a good driver. I don't know if you've ever been in the it's car. It's not about the driving. driving. It's about being trapped with you. Oh uh, yeah, Jake, could be that's, worse. that's um, that's a question. <laughs> oh, one more thing for opening night. I am bringing a miniature microphone. And I will be interviewing people, but That's I will not horrible. be interviewing people about like dumb shit that you see. I'll be interviewing you about fun shit, like who's the hottest Red Wing on the roster. Wait, or, does this mean we're getting a TikTok? We're gonna get video content, Tom. Video. Oh, yeah. So it'll be fun. Build it'll be good. Radio we're for the kids. Star. Yeah, I, we are for the kids. We sponsor a youth hockey team. Oh, speaking right. of which, we were actually, guys, we were supposed to have Detroit Ice Dreams on today. They had something pop up last minute, so we're going to try and get them on next episode. Keep your ears open. It'll be a good time. We're going to have them, and then we have hockey player from Team Trans, which will be coming on pretty soon, which will be pretty cool. And then we're going to try to get Carly Johnston, who, yeah, so I've been in touch with her a little bit. I'm I can't. I can't do it. I'm sorry. How that goes. Are you too nervous? <laughs> I love her. You know, she called. No, she's already called me a beauty, a queen. We have this very, very gay thing going on together. And oh, cute. Yeah. When I see when we see her on opening night, I'll make sure to let her know. <sighs> you, you can go. Hi, Carly. <laughs> like when you met Daniela. <laughs> Hi, Daniela. <laughs> Don't out me like this. <laughs> you told everyone in the vicinity. Yeah, but yeah. Daniela didn't know. I'm just kidding. Um, anyway. She doesn't listen to this. She knows. She, she does. She... She's not going to listen to this. I think, do you guys have anything else you want to cover? Hmm. These nuts. No, I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks, Tom. Tommy. I'm actually going to be wholesome today. I know. Surprising. Instead of yelling. <laughs> wow. That warms my heart. Jake. What? You rock. What could you possibly need? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jake. Wow. Okay. Starts off with a shut up, Maddie, from me and ends. <laughs> and then you guys note. are trying to cover a segment wow. where they're like, <laughs> talking about women in sports and the whole time y'all just shut me down well i have episode. some bad news maddie we are the least misogynistic people in all of hockey culture if you haven't been paying attention to the news that's we are the low, bare minimum that's a low <laughs> bar you nah, nah. <laughs> all right well anyway just for the record everyone heard it it's been recorded unedited and untapped content uncut, unfiltered uncut, just like Every man in Europe that I slept with. Thank you. Oh God! Yeah, you have. Ah! <laughs> Gee, right, look how you influenced me. <laughs>